All right guys, so I've been thinking about putting together another PC build for the channel and I've got a potential PC build uh, thought out right now based around this uh, Ryzen 3 1200 chip that I kind of just wanted to run by you guys and see what you think about the part selection that I have so far. So like I mentioned, this is based around the Ryzen 3 1200 and kind of the idea behind this is that, um, you know, we overclocked the chip that should take us beyond the um, capabilities of a Pentium G4560 and uh, just kind of get us in a good place overall with a good upgrade path. Now for the motherboard, I was really liking this one from ASRock, the uh, AB350M Pro 4. I usually go for full ATX boards because I like the um, just overall expandability that uh, full-size boards have. But I decided to switch it up a little bit and go micro ATX. That's been kind of like the trend these days with everyone trying to build a budget system. So um, I decided to go with this board here and uh, it seems to get a lot of good reviews. Uh, overall seems like a decent uh, price to performance for this particular board. So it's got kind of like a black and white and uh, gray color scheme. Not too bad there. Um, we've got like one, two, three, four, uh, like seven uh, USB slots there in the back. I think we've got two M.2 slots here. Yeah, uh, one of them is uh, PCIe base, so that's nice. We got a couple of fan slots. Um, it could be a little bit better there as far as uh, fan selection goes. Uh, with system fans, you get like one four pin and one three pin connector, and then you've got two for your um, CPU cooling. So. It could be a little bit better there, but uh, overall I think it's a, a decent board for the price, 75 bucks, and it is a B350 board, so this will allow us to uh, overclock the processor, so um, yeah, that's why we chose it. Now for the RAM, I was a little bit uh, conflicted because RAM prices are still skyrocketing. They're absolutely ridiculous right now, and uh, you can't really get a good value as far as RAM goes. So. I just went with this uh, Crucial Ballistics Elite um, 8 gigabyte stick. It's only one stick. No, I was kind of thinking that maybe, uh, you know, having two sticks for the dual channel memory would be uh, beneficial to Ryzen since it's got those uh, two CCXs, but I haven't actually tested that yet, so I don't know for sure. But, uh, you know, I just picked this single stick based on price alone. So if you guys know uh, maybe a better RAM kit to go with that is uh, 8 gigabytes total. Uh, and at least 2666 megahertz. Now for storage, uh, <laughs> this one pains me, man, because I would never, ever, ever in 2017 build an SSD-less system. But today that's changed because uh, prices are going up there as well, NAND flash, so um, gotta draw the line somewhere. So in this case, we've got just a one terabyte uh, Seagate hard drive for 50 bucks should allow me to uh, store games or whatever on it. <sighs> if we could just get those prices down on SSDs, like even for a 250, a 250 gig SSD, I would choose that over this um, if it was the right price. But you know, when you gotta spend like 30, 40 extra bucks beyond this, it's kind of makes it hard to justify. So that's what we're gonna be using for storage unless something better comes along in the meantime. Now for the uh, graphics card, I chose this uh, Gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti. I, the thing I like about this card is uh, it's not one of those small form factor cards. I see a lot of people going with those in their budget systems. Those look retarded in a <laughs> regular size case. Uh, I don't like that at all. Plus, you gotta rely on one fan to cool the whole card. I like the idea of having two fans. Theoretically, it should be a little bit quieter, run a little bit cooler in theory. Um, also, this particular card doesn't require a PCIe connector, so that's one less uh, cable that you've got to run as far as cable management goes, so that's nice. Um, it's not quite as big as the uh, normal 1050 Ti, but it's a little bit bigger than those uh, single fan small form factor cards. Now, if we were, uh, you know, in a best case scenario here, I think maybe going with an RX 570 or 1060 3 gigabyte model, um, you know, that would probably be the best choice for a budget build like this, but like, I don't know, they've just kind of priced themselves out of the market. If those are going to stay above 200 bucks, it's not really worth it. If they were like 170, 180 like they used to be, we'd definitely get that over the 1050 Ti. But for now, 
This is kind of the card that wins by default. Now as far as power supplies go, I kind of like what I'm seeing here. Um, you can go with a non-modular power supply for like 10 bucks less than this, but I think it's worth it to uh, spend the extra 10 bucks and uh, make your system clean. Especially with these cheap cases, the cable management's not really that great, so you kind of got to um, you know, do the best you can. But it helps if you have a modular power supply. So in this case, EVGA has a new line of power supplies, their uh, B3 series, which is a fully modular 80 plus bronze um, certified lineup. And uh, the one that I've chose here is 450 watts. It should be fine for this particular system. Uh, it's compact, only 150 millimeters in length, and uh, yeah, the modular cables though, so that's nice. And we don't even have to run a PCIe one, so you really make out well here in terms of uh, you know potential cable management. So I like what we're going with there. Uh, 50 bucks was the least amount that you could spend to get a uh, modular power supply from what I've seen, and uh, unless you really need that 10 bucks for something else, I would. Let's go ahead and grab this. Now for the case, I want to get my hands on this uh, Corsair uh, Carbide Series 88R. This is kind of like the 100R, but the micro ATX version. I've seen these, this uh, kind of trend of putting micro ATX motherboards in an ATX case. Um, not feeling that one, son. If it's a micro ATX board, it gets a micro ATX case. That's the only way I'm rolling. So we've got this 88R here. It's uh, it's getting a little bit dated in terms of its looks and uh, internal layout and stuff like that, but it's not bad for the price. Basically like 50, 55 bucks and uh, this is what you get. So I think that's pretty much what I'm going to be rolling with here. We should come out to around 550 bucks um, total with this build. So I think I'm gonna make it happen. I've been kind of you know reaching out to some vendors and uh, manufacturers and stuff and seeing what kind of uh, parts I can get my hands on so let me know if you guys have any other parts that may fit into this build a little bit better But are the same quality wise and uh, I'll see what I can do. So yeah, that's about it guys um, If you do if you guys do decide to build something like this and you want to uh, help me out Go ahead and check out my kit.com link. It's uh, the same parts that are on PC part picker, but this has uh, affiliate links for me, so they'll give, it'll give me a uh, small kickback if you guys decide to buy something. Uh, no pressure. No pressure at all. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if you guys are going to buy it, do it to that kick.com. Help a brother out. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I am uh, out of here for now. Let me know what you guys think about this potential build right here, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. See you.